Hello viewers, in this video I am going to discuss about unification of Germany states. Uh, it is mostly based on UPSC mains GS paper 1. Let's begin our topic. Unification of Germany states. So, when the United States, US, announced its independence from Great Britain in 1776, the Central Europe was a fragmented area of roughly 300 Soviet independent states like India. Okay, Kingdoms, touches and principalities and free cities etc. all are combined together that is called independent states. The German states were bound together in a loose political entity known as the Holy Roman Empire which dated to the era Charles Emengi in the 800s. By the late 18th century, the Holy Roman Empire was and Walter remarked neither holy nor Roman nor an empire. Very important quote this one is Walter remarked the Holy Empire, Roman Empire is as neither holy nor Roman or not an empire. So during the mid 18th century a rivalry developed between the Holy Roman Empire's two largest states that is the Kingdom of Austria ruled by Habsburgs and Kingdom of Prussia ruled by Hohenzollern. It means there are two kind of largest states. One is Austria and second one is Prussia. Here, the traditionally Austria was the dominant German state and as such the Habsburg king was elected as the Holy Roman Empire. This influence started to change in the 1740s when Prussia strengthened by newly acquired lands and an enlarged military began to challenge Austria's hegemony. The Kingdom of Prussia was the first German state to officially recognize the United States in 1785 when it signed a Treaty of Amity and Commerce. Austria did not recognize the United States until 17. 97 when it accepted Conrad Frederick Wagner as US Council at trustee a city then under the jurisdictions of the Habsburg Empire. During the early 19th century Napoleon's armies occupied moved Tarau or were allied with the German states. In 1806, the Holy Roman Empire was dissolved and when the Congress of Vienna met in 1814 to 1815, the major question was what to do with Central Europe? So the question is what to do with Central Europe? The solution was to consolidate German states and to create the German Confederation. A conglomeration of 39 states including Austria and Prussia. The members of the German Confederation pledged to, to come to the aid of any member who was attacked by a foreign power. However, the Federation fell short of any economic or national unity. The first effort at striking some form of economic unification between the members of the German Confederation came with the 1834 establishment of the Zollverein Customs Union. In the meantime, the effect of first industrial revolution starting from 1750 to 1850 we discussed in the first lecture onwards uh, if you are not watching the industrial revolution video let's go and watch that began to 
take hold in Central Europe and North America. During this time, there was increased emigration by Germans to the United States in search of greater economic opportunities as well as political, religious and personal freedom. The combination of these two events propelled the first official acts of recognition between the U.S. and various smaller German states as they negotiated and signed treaties, conventions and agreements to regulate trade, commerce, navigation, naturalization and inheritance rights. This is how the how the unification of the German is ongoing. In a few cases, the United States established diplomatic relations such as with the Hanseatic League, the free cities of Lubeck and Berman and Hamburg and the Kingdom of Baden. The main issue that confronted the idea of German unification by the mid 19th century was the idea of a greater Germany versus a smaller Germany. The concept of the smaller Germany was that a unified German entity should exclude Austria while the idea of greater Germany was that Germany should include the kingdom of Austria. The proponents of Smaller Germany argued that Austria's inclusion would not cause difficulties for German policy. As the Kingdom of Austria was part of the Greater Austrian Empire, which included large swath of land in Central and Southeastern Europe that was composed of nearly 15 different minorities. Those who favored Greater Germany pointed to the traditional role played by Austria, which was mostly composed of Germans and the Habsburg rulers in German affairs. It means there are two kinds of Germany they are demanding. One is Greater Germany, another one is Smaller Germany. The Smaller Germany, it's excluding Austria. Okay. Let's move on to next slide. The first effort at unifying German states came in the revolutionary year 1848. We discussed this uh, revolutionary year 1848 in the previous uh, video. Okay. Once news of the February 1848 revolution in Paris spread many felt that the time was finally at hand for German unification. Rural riots broke out in the weeks after February 1848 and spread to the urban areas. Throughout the German states, the revolutionaries advocated for freedom of the press, a national militia, a national German Parliament and trial by jury. Other ideas that were campaign championed during the heady days of 1848 were the abolition of the privilege of the aristocracy. The creation of constitutions in several of the German states, a more fair system of taxations and freedom of religion. On May 18, 1848, the German National Assembly met at Frankfurt am Main, representing the first assembly to be freely elected by the German people. Yet, despite the election of an imperial voice regent, the government was flawed from the beginning by its lack of strong, effective, executive power. By the autumn of 1849, the revolution disintegrated and hope of fully unifying German states was extinguished for the first time being. The 
Next attempt at German unification. A successful one was undertaken by Otto, Otto von Bismarck. So Bismarck is famous person for the unification of Germany. The Prime Minister of Prussia and Bismarck was a proponent of smaller Germany. He don't like to include the Austria for the Germany. Not to mention a master at the game of real politic. So the German unification was achieved by the force of Prussia and enforced from the top down. Meaning that it was not an organic movement that was fully supported and spread by the popular classes but instead was a product of Prussian royal policies. The first war of German unification was the 1862 Danish war. Began over the touches of Slegwick and Holstein, Bismarck allied with Austria to fight the Danish in a war to protect the interest of Holstein, a member of German Confederation. After that, the Second War of German Unification. Alright. The Second War of German Unification was the 1866 Austro Prussian War. There is a war between Austria and Prussia. Prussian power, um, they demanded the smaller Germany, and Austria is demanding the greater Germany. Now, Austro Prussian War started 1866, which settled the person of smaller versus greater Germany. This brief war pictured Prussia and her allies against Austria and other other German states. The Prussia war won and directly annexed some of the German states that had sided with Austria. In an act of leniency, the Prussia allowed some of the larger Austrian allies to maintain their independence such as Baden and Bavaria. In 1867, Bismarck, he, he was Prime Minister of Germany, so created the North German Confederation, a union of the Northern German states under the hegemony of Prussia. Several other German states joined and the North German Confederation served as a model for the future German Empire. Here, af after the Second World War, Second War of the German Unification, the Third War of German Unification came. The third and final act of the German Unification was the Franco-Prussia War. Previously we discussed Austria-Prussia War. Now it's Franco-Prussia War of 1872-71. Astroized by Bismarck to draw the Western German states into alliance with the North German Confederation. With the French defeat, the German Empire was proclaimed in January 1871 in the palace at Versailles. Versailles is a place were located in France. So from this point the forward foreign policy of the German Empire was made in Berlin with the German Kaiser who was also the king of Prussia according accrediting the ambassadors of the foreign nations the relations were served as when the U.S. declared war upon Imperial Germany in 1917. Next, major events happened during unification of German states. United States recognition of the Federal German Republic in 1848. On July 8, 1848, the Secretary of State John M. Meldon Middleton informed U.S. Prime Minister to 
Prussia and J. Donaldson that the United States was prepared to recognize any unified de facto German government that appeared capable of maintaining its power. On August 9, 1848, Donaldson was appointed as U.S. Minister to the German Federal Parliament at Frankfurt and presented his credentials on September 13, 1848. However, the failure of this first experiment of German unification led to the U.S. recalling Donaldson from service to the Federal German Republic on November 2, 1849. Donaldson res resumed his previous appointments as U.S. Minister to Prussia again. Next, United States Recognitions of the North German Union in 1867. Following the establishment of the North German Confederation on July 1, 1867, on November 26, 1867, the Union U.S. Minister to Prussia, George Bancroft, informed Secretary of State William H. Seward that he had attended the opening of the North German Parliament. He requested, however, that the Secretary formally notify him of the intentions of the U.S. government concerning the question of the recognition of the North German Confederation. On December 9, 1867, Secretary Seward approved to Bancroft decisions to attain the opening of the North German Parliament. Since he was the officially accredited U.S. Minister to the Prussian King Wilhelm I, who was also the hereditary president of the North German Confederation. Furthermore, the Seward informed Bancroft that he would disseminate a description of the Confederation's flag so that its ships would be welcomed in American waters. This exchange between Seward and Bancroft implicitly signified a formal recognition of the North German Confederation by the U.S., he was allowed to uh, welcome the uh, flow of the ship uh, from their American waters. So that is why the recognition of the um, North German Confederation happened. And uh, next one is United States recognition of the Federal German Republic in 1848. On July 8, 1848, Secretary of the State John M. Middleman informed U.S. Minister to Prussia and J. Donaldson he, that the U.S. was prepared to recognize any unit, unified de facto German government. We discussed already. Now we have to move on towards this one. Okay, okay, okay. Next, next. United States recognition of the German Empire and establishment of diplomatic relations in 1871. Following the establishment of the Empire, German Empire on January 18, 1871, the United States recognized the new German Empire by changing the accreditations of its minister to Prussia to become minister to the German Empire. On April 8, 1871, the U.S. Envy Extraordinary and Minister Plenipotentiary to the Prussia George Bancroft presented the new German Empire Wilhelm I, who was concurrently King of Prussia with a letter from U.S. President 
unless the unless ulysses is grant dated march 16 1871 the letter from the president congratulated the empire on his assumption of the german throne and recognized him as the head of the state of the federal germany the termination of relations during the first world war in 1917 the german germans resumptions of unrestricted submarine warfare in early 1917 to the termination of diplomatic relations between imperial germany and the united states on february 3 1917 the us secretary of the state robert lansing informed the german ambassador in washington dc count john and own prince prof or uh, that us president woodrow wilson had served diplomatic relations with germany that the us ambassador in berlin had been withdrawn and that the us government would be written returning own burns for traps passports after that us declarations of the war against imperial germany in 181917 following a series of attacks against american merchant ships on the high seas by german u boat on february 24 1917 the us ambassador in london walter kins pages received the inform informations in famous zimmerman telegram from the british foreign secretary arthur falfour this led to the decision to abandon the plan to adopt armed neutrality by placing us naval personnel on the civilian ships to guard them against german attacks on april 2 us president wilson went before congress to ask for a declaration of war against germany in order to make the world safe for democracy safe for democracy woodrow wilson period following the passage of a joint resolution by congress on april 6 the president wilson issued on the same day a proclamation to the effect that a state of war existed between germany and united states here overall impact upon us foreign policy due to the unification of germany the history of the establishment of recognition between the united states and the german states impacted several different areas of policy including trade and commerce first impact on trade and commerce although the napoleonic period stunted the growth of industrialization in the german states during the early 19th century by the 1820s and 1830s the industrialization process was underway especially in areas such as westphalia rhineland and upper silesia it was also during this time that the first railways were built in the german lands thus facilitating the transportation of goods to and from the main parts of hamburg and berlin as a result the german states after 1871 onwards german empire and the united states both sought to cultivate trade and commercial ties for mutual benefit second the immigration citizenship and naturalization the effect is on immigration citizenship and naturalization in the 19th century the most german states had mandatorily military service for all male subjects that is all male 
citizens, whereas the United States did not have any such policy. One point of contention between the U.S. and the German and the, some some of the German states was whether the German citizens were immigrating to the U.S. to obtain the citizenship and then return to Central Europe and thus eschewed the military service in 1868 the U.S. minister took Prussia and the North German Union George Bancroft negotiated a series of naturalization treaties that sought to close this loophole. See Ban Bancroft treaties for further information via online. After the creation of the Second Reach in 1871, there were questions as to whether U.S. officials should abide by treaties concluded with individual states or with Prussia in dealing with the issues of trade, citizenship or extradition. Two major principles guided by the U.S. foreign policy for, towards the German states. First one, where a state has lost its separate existence. As in the case of Hanover and Nazu, no questions can arise. The second one, where no treaty has been negotiated with the empire, the treaties with the various states which have preserved a separate existence have been restored to. The two to demand also taken and guide, guided by the U.S. foreign policy towards the German states. After that, the, although the con constitution of the German Empire of 1871 stipulated that the empire was responsible for treaties, alliances and representing the empire, the smaller states still retain the right of legislation. This included the right to legislate, to grant executor to the foreign consul in their territories and to enter into conventions with foreign nations as long as they did not concern matters already within the jurisdictions of the empire or the emperor. Finally, the U United States helps to recognize the Germany and how the policy to be changed, how it is to be impacted like on trade, commerce and transportations and immigrations and naturalizations and army persons etc. And the, how the recognitions happen for Northern Germany, Federal Germany, etc. So these are all ma major events we discussed previously. And how the German unification happened, uh, First War, Second War and Third War, we heard uh, mention. And after that, uh, how the German state is uh, uh, created with the help of the certain uh, major uh, organizations like uh, uh, UNCIF etc. Okay, so I think it's over. If you like my ch uh, channel, like it, share it, and comment it. Uh, this video, subscribe it. Thank you for watching. Thank you.